welcome back to my channel. My name is Trisha and this is chaos around my neck. I'm not sure what he is doing. He's doing his own thing. I'm sure he'll pop in and out in today's video, but I just felt like I just wanted to hang out with him this morning. Uh, before I get started, I just wanted to just say thank you to all of you for all of your kind messages. Um, going through what I've had to go through is extremely hard with losing Banba. And I was really nervous about doing it publicly, but I felt like it was just important to do it publicly just to keep you guys updated so you know what's going on. And honestly, just to teach you guys like what I learned from all of it. So if it can benefit anyone, then it's always going to be worth it. So I decided that it would definitely be worth it. But I was not expecting to get the amount of support that I did. That being said, I was overwhelmed with the amount of support that you guys have been showing me and all of your kind messages and it really did help me in dealing with all of the grief and it just was really heartwarming to feel all of your guys's love and support in that horrible situation so i'm just very grateful for all of you i really appreciate it and i'm gonna try to move forward and just continue educating i do have a lot of exciting things coming so i'm very excited to bring you guys along on the journey. I'm going to be getting a couple of new animals and I'm going to be doing a lot of upgrades. So a lot of amazing things are coming and I'm very excited and Banba of course is never going to be forgotten and his legacy will always just continue. So just thank you to everyone. Seriously, I love all of you guys so much. Just thank you, thank you, thank you. So that being said, we're going to move forward with today's video and today's video is going to be all about beginner reptiles that are either uncommon or you may have never even heard of before. When it comes to looking for a beginner reptile, um, people always see like the same one. So it's always leopard gecko, crested gecko, sometimes bearded dragons, corn snakes, sometimes ball pythons, the list goes on and on. But the thing is, those animals are extremely popular and you've definitely heard of them before. And there are a lot of amazing reptiles that you may not have heard of that would also be great for beginners and sometimes even better than the most popular options that you'll hear of. So I have put a list together and we are gonna run through them today and maybe you'll learn about a new reptile that could potentially be a good pet for you. So the very first reptile that is completely uncommon but would be an amazing beginner reptile is a cave gecko. So I haven't really looked into them that much and recently I did and I was amazed at the ease of care for this type of a gecko. And I'm just like shocked that I really don't hear about them too often. People don't really seem to own them that often. And it's just crazy because like they actually seem easier than a lot of the actual like popular beginner reptiles that you would hear of. So the Chinese cave gecko is a gorgeous, gorgeous animal. That is what attracts most people to them. They are just so stunning to look at. They have these bright eyes. Um, a lot of the times they're colors. Sometimes they'll have orange stripes. The Japanese cave geckos are a little bit more saturated and colorful than the Chinese, but the Chinese is still colorful regardless. And they are so easy to care for. And I had no idea. So they're actually docile by nature, which is really, really nice. They're also easily handleable which is something that I really didn't think with these geckos. Of course, each one is gonna have its own personality and different things that they're willing to tolerate. Um, but for the most part, they are a gecko that you can handle, which is something that I, for some reason, I had this perceived notion in my mind that cave geckos are very reclusive, which they kind of are, but I didn't think that they would be a handleable gecko. But the fact that they are just makes them even more of a beginner reptile for someone that wants to handle an animal but is still getting comfortable with the idea of it. These geckos can live 10 to 12 years. They're usually eight to nine inches, which is a pretty decent size for a beginner. Um, it's not too large and it's also not going to require too much space either. So for cave geckos, the minimum is a 10 gallon. And honestly, I think that that's too small. <laughs> I always do. I always think that it's better to just get a little bit larger. Um, my minimum that I would recommend is at least a 20 gallon enclosure and it's important to take note that yes they are cave geckos meaning that they like to go in caves and hide but they also are semi arboreal and will climb so it's important to give them climbing features as well. So as I mentioned earlier I would recommend a 20 gallon as a minimum. Another enclosure size that would be great would be an 18 by 18 by 24. That way you're giving them plenty of floor space and climbing space. So the other thing that makes them so 
easy and a perfect beginner reptile is that these geckos do not require heat. They also do not require UVB. And I don't like the mentality of, oh, they don't need that much, so you don't have to give it to them. Obviously, you can give them UVB. It can be beneficial. So it's not like I'm completely ruling that out. But what's cool is that these geckos can tolerate room temperatures and they actually can overheat easily. So it's best to not give them heat as long as you have a comfortable room temperature of 65 to 75 degrees. 80 degrees is the absolute hottest that you can take these geckos. Anything more than that and they can overheat and it could cause them to die. So you don't want that to happen, obviously. So it's a very great plus for people that want to keep a reptile, but they don't like the idea of all of the different heating and lighting aspects of it because the cave geckos generally will not need that as long as you have a comfortable room temperature. So they do require a 50 to 60% humidity. That's probably the most challenging thing about these geckos, which isn't too difficult. Um, so it's a little bit less than crested geckos, but you do need to mist down the enclosures daily to make sure that you're reaching the proper humidity. Last but not least, they are insectivores. So some beginners don't like the idea of having to feed insects. So if that's something that you don't like, then it's not going to be a good animal for you. But for people that don't mind feeding insects to your animal, this would be a perfect animal for you. So cave geckos definitely need more attention. They are very cool geckos and very easy to take care of as long as you know what you're doing. Of course, as I'm saying they're easy to take care of, that doesn't mean that you should not do research. You should always be doing research for any reptile that you want to get. Are you going to say hi? Chaos is saying hi now. So the next animal on my list that would be a great beginner is actually garter snakes. So I've made, um, I think I made a video on like a list of really great beginner snakes and I didn't put garters on there because it's just one of those animals that, that you don't really think of that often, which is kind of lame because they're really, really cool snakes. Something that I really like about garter snakes is that they're actually very active during the day and they actually will bask. So it's a snake that you will definitely see out in the open during the day, which is not something that you get too often when you keep snakes. A huge plus about garter snakes is that they actually stay very, very small. So the smallest snake that I usually recommend for beginners are like corn snakes, which can get pretty large, honestly. And then um, sand boas, which, which is probably similar to the garter size snake, but the thing is they're slimmer, so they're still smaller than a sand boa as well. So garter snakes as adults will only get two to three feet and they're very skinny, slim snakes. Um, so they don't require too much space, which is also a plus and just makes caring for them easier. Another huge plus is that people that want to keep snakes, um, a lot of the times they don't like the idea of having to feed rodents. That's always a huge turnoff for people. But the plus about garter snakes is that you don't have to just always be feeding rodents. You can feed them little rodents here and there, but in the wild they actually mainly eat like amphibians, tadpoles, fish, lizards, and night crawlers. So there are a variety of different things that you can feed your garter snake in captivity. Um, something to avoid is feeding them insects like crickets or mealworms, superworms. Those are things that you aren't going to want to be feeding your garter snake in captivity. So that's something to be aware of. But you can feed them earthworms and fish. You just want to make sure that you're getting all of these from really healthy places to make sure that they aren't carrying parasites. So because they are baskers, garter snakes will require UVB and heat. That is something to be aware of. I'm not going to go into too many specifics in this video because I'm not doing like a full care video on every single animal. I just wanted to bring up each one and just discuss them a little bit. So garter snakes are definitely also a perfect option for beginners. The third one on my list is the pink tongue skink. So the pink tongue skink is very similar to blue tongues. However, they have pink tongues instead of blue tongues and they stay much smaller. They're also semi-arboreal and will love to climb. So these skinks are so cool because they do stay a little bit smaller. They're also very sweet in demeanor. They will allow you to handle them. They tolerate it very well. And you just don't hear about them too often. You always hear about blue tongue skinks, but this option isn't as big. It's not going to take up as much space and they're just as sweet as blue tongues as long as you get captive bred and it's used to handling. So these guys usually are around 17 inches. The ideal enclosure for one is a 24 by 18 by 18. They will require heat to make sure that they can reach an 80 degree Fahrenheit heat spot. 
so that isn't too high they're actually more comfortable with like room temperatures but it is good to give them the option of that warm spot you just don't want to overdo it so the most difficult thing about the pink tongue skinks is that they actually will require a high humidity level this can be very challenging for beginners so this is the one reason that i kind of didn't want to put them on the list and that is because they require 70 to 80 percent humidity that is very, very difficult to achieve, especially for someone that just is a beginner and doesn't really know what they're doing. So that's the one thing that I'm kind of like, I don't know if I want to put it on the list, but I'm just going to put them on the list anyway, because obviously if you do your research and you really know what you're doing, it is possible to take care of them and give them the proper humidity. So I'm still putting them on the list because they're amazing skinks and they deserve more attention. Number four on my list are African fat tail geckos. I've talked about them so much because I absolutely love them. These geckos are smaller than leopard geckos. They're more tolerant. Uh, they just have very, very sweet dispositions and people just aren't as aware of them just because of the fact that they aren't bred as much. So you just don't see them as much, um, but they are absolutely worth keeping if you want a gecko. They still require heat and a higher humidity level. It's not too high, like 50 to 60% is fine for these geckos. So you just want to mist down the enclosure once or twice a day. Uh, but they are literally the best. I love African fat tail geckos. Like if I were to breed geckos, I would breed African fat tails. They're just so cute and I love their personality so much. They stay small. They don't require too big of an enclosure. Um, I think the recommended is, I think some people actually recommend a 10 gallon for them, which again, I think is just way, way, way too small. Um, I would recommend, um, I think right now what I have mango in is a 24 by 18 by 12 I would say that that is the absolute bare minimum um, for one African fat tail gecko I would honestly recommend going larger I'm going to be upgrading mango she will have a 24 by 24 by 16 so I'm really excited for that upgrade but these guys don't require very much space they're very cute and they should definitely be known more because they are just the perfect beginner reptile. Next on my list are gargoyle geckos, which a lot of people do know of. They're pretty common. Uh, they aren't as common as crested geckos, which is just why I want to bring them up in this video. Their care is essentially exactly the same. The only difference is that gargoyle geckos look a little bit different and they have a little bit sharper and more teeth because they are adept to having a little bit more protein in their diet. So that's pretty much the only difference. You absolutely want to make sure that you are giving them lots of insects as well as their Pangea or Rapache or whatever gecko diet that you're feeding them. Uh, because they definitely need that extra protein. But other than that, the care is exactly the same. The bare minimum enclosure would be an 18 by 18 by 24 for an adult. The humidity level for the gargoyle gecko should be 60 to 80%, which can be achieved by just misting the enclosure every morning and night. That's what works for mine. They're very simple to take care of. They're very similar to crested geckos, which are like the other number one beginner reptiles. So they just deserve a little bit more attention because they're just amazing. They're a little bit more expensive, a little bit harder to find, but they're absolutely worth it. I love gargoyle geckos. And the last reptile that would be great for a beginner on my list, I felt like I had to mention a tortoise for this because a lot of people want to know about smaller tortoises. I've been getting tons of questions about them lately. And you always hear about Russian tortoises. Well, at least I do. I feel like that's the most common pet tortoise that you hear about. Um, so I wanted to make mention of a different species, which is the Herman's tortoise. The Herman's tortoise also stays small. Tortoises are a perfect beginner reptile for people that are trying to get over their fear of reptiles. Most people just don't fear tortoises because they don't bite, they don't really do anything, and they're just really cute. Um, so it's a perfect reptile. Herman's tortoises don't get very large, so it's a perfect option for a tortoise, and it's one that you don't hear about too often. So that is my list of beginner reptiles that are a little bit uncommon, but would make great pets for beginners as long as you do all of the research and make sure that it is a good fit for you. If you guys can think of any other options, please go ahead and leave it in the comments. I would love to hear about it. I should definitely do more videos like this in the future because it's fun to just talk about other reptiles that are just underrated and just deserve more attention because they're amazing too. So I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for being here today and I will see you guys in the next one. And Chaos, I don't know what Chaos is doing, but he says goodbye too. So I'll see you guys in the next one.